Well, thanks uh, to Mary and to the Faculty of Education and other faculties for inviting me uh, here today for my first trip to Vancouver and the utopia of uh, UBC, which I'd never seen before. And tomorrow I get to visit with Andrew uh, Feinberg, Simon Fra Fraser University, the other fabled university I've been hearing about forever and have never seen. So this uh, completes my uh, West Coast uh, trajectory that I will have seen all of the uh, major cool places in uh, the US and uh, Canada, so I appreciate uh, this uh, opportunity. Um, my topic today is digital cultures, media, and the transformations of uh, citizenship. And I think Mary uh, knows that uh, I'm a Hegelian because I'm gonna do a synthesis of the analysis of media spectacle and its role in contemporary US politics that uh, Megan did and the emphasis on uh, digital culture and internet uh, politics that uh, Darren did. In fact, I want to argue that it is the confluence of media spectacle and digital culture that is playing the key role in the current US presidential election. And I will suggest that probably this is uh, playing a key role everywhere in uh, politics uh, throughout the world that the battles are taking place more and more on the terrain of media spectacle and then often unobserved, unobserved by the public at large, sub rosa in the spaces of the uh, internet. So that's what I'm going to explore today using the uh, 2008 uh, presidential election. Uh, by media spectacle, I have a uh, technical concept that's somewhat different than D Guy Debord, although it's obviously uh, influenced uh, by uh, Debord. Uh, like Megan, I'm going to see media spectacle as a contested terrain, whereas for De Board, it's the overpowering hegemonic uh, force of advanced capitalism, of the media and consumer society, turning everyone into uh, passive uh, spectators. But I want to argue about the contest of this spectacle. And I take it that that's uh, what Megan was doing when she was talking about Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert and the way that they uh, contested the uh, spectacle of uh, the US uh, corporate uh, media in their construction of uh, political events. Uh, and so that'll be my uh, topic today. Um, to um, build on Darren's talk, I would argue that uh, the media are a public pedagogy that people learn about the world, about politics, about gender and everyday life from the media that are a major pedagogical force. So my conclusion is that we're going to need a counter pedagogy to re-deconstruct, critique the media, and that will be media literacy, but also digital literacy. But also, I want to argue, the production of alternative media whether it's public access, television or alternative film and uh, video, or the blogosphere and uh, um, internet uh, politics. Um, unlike uh, the board also, I'm using the term uh, media spectacle as a descriptive and a diagnostic term and not a denunciatory one. For uh, the board, the society, the spectacle, its lies, its illusions, its opium, and uh, this kind of uh, uh, negative um, uh, phenomenon. Whereas again, I'm gonna argue this is the form of contemporary uh, politics and everyday life and that uh, there are important struggles and contests going on, and I want to uh, talk about those. So to look at the US uh, presidential um, uh, politics, let's go back to the beginning of the year, and let's look at the uh, Democratic 
presidential primaries. And very briefly, I want to convince you that it took the form and that this is the form of spectacle politics. And in particular, in the Democratic Party primaries, we had the spectacle of gender against the spectacle of race. From the very beginning of his quite amazing uh, victory in uh, Iowa, the Obama spectacle was a spectacle of change, of hope, of youth, of color against the political establishment. I mean, this is fairly astonishing that uh, Obama won Iowa when you think about it, which is a very white state. It's a very uh, rural, uh, it was seen as a conservative uh, state. It's a state with a lot of seniors, but Obama won that primary and quite a few uh, others. And I think it was the spectacle of hope and of uh, change that Obama uh, exemplified. You saw this not only uh, the spectacle part of Obama, on the daily campaign trail, where everyone, everywhere he went, it was like a rock festival, and he was like a rock star in terms of inspiring the crowds and the uh, audiences. But also, I started to note, as the primary season went on, Obama gave like a brilliant 30 minute to an hour speech after every single primary. I'm a political junkie, so I was staying up late watching all of the Democratic primaries. It was a, quite a spectacle, quite a race. And whether Obama won or lost, he would make you know, a speech that was you know, quite a uh, spectacle. Now, turning to uh, digital culture, the other thing that we didn't see on television, but that everyone uh, is aware, uh, is an important uh, part of the Obama campaign was the Obama internet presence. Obama raised more money on the internet than any other uh, campaign. He made the um, best use of the internet of any uh, presidential uh, candidate. Uh, he's going for a million friends on uh, Facebook. He's uh, putting out blogs. Uh, music videos, that the Obama internet spectacle has been something that has never really been uh, seen before. Now, there is a counter spectacle here that you might not have seen, which is that the Republicans bought up a lot of internet domain names that were very close to Obama's, and so you would get an Obama page, uh, and it would come up with the Friends of Obama, thinking it was, it was like a, his Facebook, but they were all rogues, or they were people like Bill Ayers, who was a member of the uh, weatherman, and a good guy, professor of education at Chicago, but who had been villainized uh, by the uh, right wing, you know, as a weatherman, as a terrorist, as part of Obama's uh, terrorist uh, network. There's also been going on um, sub rosa on the internet uh, attacks on Obama, that he's a Muslim, that he's an Iranian agent, that he's anti-American, you know, on and on and on about both Barack and uh, Michelle uh, Obama. And there's a third spectacle that you may not uh, know, and that is the uh, National Enquirer spectacle, which is uh, a tabloid that sells millions of uh, articles uh, each um, a week, uh, and has had the most scurrilous stories about the Clintons for years and Obama that are uh, imaginable. On the other hand, very bizarrely, the last month, the star of the National Enquirer has been Sarah Palin. Uh, Sarah Palin's other man revealed uh, family member uh, details the affair, she confesses all, I love him. So there, there's, there's been uh, different levels of the campaign going on in the mainstream media, the uh, television news, uh, the internet, uh, on uh, YouTube. Um, probably everyone has seen Obama Girl, which got five million um, uh, hits. I think it's one of the most seen music videos in uh, history. Uh, Will I Am's uh, Yes We Can uh, music uh, video that got together 